All right, so I'm looking at the geo now in the non sub D mode, and I can see I've got some weird stuff happening here, kind of over in this area, and this stuff is kind of poofing out. And that's because we had the insert edge loop where we tried to have it follow the, the surface curvature, and it kind of just messed a few things up. So this edge here is going to be pretty easy. That's mostly just supporting this transition here that we see. But uh, this up here, I'm just going to need to come in and probably just grab these faces and we'll just scale them so they're a little bit more reasonably uh, oriented. We mostly just want them to be planar. So this is still, you can see it's not really oriented specifically to world space. It might be close, but it's still looking at the component stuff. So I'm going to come over to my tool settings and you can get here again. I'm just going to, this is my, my uh, scale tool. I'm just going to double click it and we'll set the axis orientation to world and it'll find the middle point of my selection and then set the axis to match the world. And I can just kind of scale everything. And I can see I'm going to get some weird stuff with these, these points here, most likely. I would like them to be kind of equidistant in. So I'm just going to grab these faces. And by equidistant, I mean like this is probably a good place for them to be, but like not right up against it. And you can see if I scale in what's going on there. So I'm going to grab these verts, just do a shift select, and just kind of bring them in like this so that my, my hammer face, maybe it can, it can have a little bit of a roundness there, but not as much, not all pinchy and weird. So now that we've cleaned that stuff up, let me go ahead and add that extra edge loop in here. So that'll be insert edge loop there. And we can just take a, a look back here, make sure all the rest of that stuff is good. I'm gonna tap the three key. Let me hop into object mode here. So that's looking pretty good so far. I'm going to go ahead and fill this hole in back here. And to do that, this uh, this side edge here is going to be a little bit annoying, but not that big of a deal and not really worth going through and messing with deleting it all the way around. So, oh, well, here's a thing that we can do that will make this process a little bit easier. I can turn on symmetry so that as I'm working on one side, I will effectively be working on the other side. So you can kind of double your money on that front. So let's go ahead and I'm going to double click the pointer here, the selection tool, and we'll go to, uh, sorry, not soft selection, symmetry settings, and we'll turn symmetry to object X. And we can just test that as I'm selecting one, I'm grabbing the other. So the reason we're using object X here is you can see X is my axis side to side. If I wanted to make it uh, object Z, like if you happen to have been working with your geo being rotated, then you can just select object Z here, or you can always just rotate your geo and then uh, you'll have to freeze the transform information. So before we get into too much new stuff here, let's just go ahead and, and uh, if hopefully your object X, and if not, just set to object Z and we'll, we'll worry about the other stuff uh, at some point in the near future. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these two edges and we will go to bridge. And then I'm going to grab these two edges, tap the G key, grab these edges and tap the G key. So when I get down here, I actually have this kind of situation. So what I need to do is add an extra edge on these inside faces so that I have a place that I can weld these guys to. So I'm going to go to my edge mode and just select those and automatically I will have selected the ones on the other side. I know it can be maybe a little bit tricky to see what's going on here. And then I'll just go to connect. I'm going to make sure that I do not have insert with edge flow turned on. And now what I can do, whoops, I think I needed to include this edge too. Let me zoom in a little bit. This one. Oh, that one. Okay. So now it's going all the way. Hit apply. Sorry, I realized that's off the recording area. So I just hit apply there. So now I have this edge internally running along and I can very easily just use my target weld and go to vertex mode and then just click and drag. I guess I've got to reactivate target weld. Okay, so now my edges are going fully around the inside there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of some of this stuff so it's a little easier to see where my result is currently. Sorry, that's five, I'm, or uh, four, I meant to hit three to go into sub D mode. All right, so I'm gonna need to sharpen up this, this outer edge here just a little bit. 
go back to select mode, top of the one key. And to do that, I think I can, I can certainly use creasing. And that might be a, a good opportunity to show that off. So I'll do that. I'm going to go ahead and probably just delete this edge. If I'm going to crease this stuff, I don't need that edge to be there. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the crease tool. And again, with the symmetry selected, this is, this is much easier. And probably this back edge here needs to be creased as well. I imagine that's reasonably sharp. And we'll grab these surfaces here as well. All right, hopefully that selection will stick. I'm gonna go ahead and tap the three key. Here's my creasing. So I should be able to middle mouse drag and sharpen them up. So you can see we have we have two ways that we can control which edges are sharp and which edges are not sharp. Go ahead and do that. One of them is by adding supporting edges, as we have done here, and one of them is by creasing, as we have done back there. Okay, that's going to work for the for the hammer. I know it's not exactly what the reference is showing, but the point is less to do something specific than it is to just demonstrate some approaches, various approaches. So I'm going to go ahead and push that in a little bit further so that we get a little bit of a better read there. Okay, so let's move on now to the, uh, the rest of the hammer. I'm going to go tap the one key and I'm going to grab this face here. I'm going to leave symmetry on until it becomes problematic. I don't know if that's actually ever going to happen because the model is symmetrical but sometimes it can get a little bit strange so we'll go ahead and do an, uh, an extrude here and i'm going to just go to my scale okay well so here you go this is a good example i don't know if this is really an issue or not but you can see because i have symmetry turned on my pivot is no longer in the middle of the object but I don't know that it actually is going to have that big of an impact. Seems like the behavior that I'm getting is, is pretty consistent. But I'm going to go ahead and scale it flat. And I'm going to grab this vert over here and this vert over here and just kind of move them up a bit. So we're getting some kind of a approximation of the transition that's happening here without having to go to the full process of modeling it. Now this is rectangular and if I want it to be round, which I think I do, I need it to be a little bit more of a square. It may not be super noticeable, but just going to square that a little tiny bit. I'm going to grab these faces again and extrude. And I guess I'm making this part now. So let me kind of zoom out a little bit. And this is, I'm just eyeballing this. Like if, if it really needed to be very, very accurate, I would probably have this in the background, maybe like associated with the camera view or something. But uh, I don't, I don't want to put too many things on your plates. So I'd prefer you just kind of think about the approach that I'm taking to creating these forms here. So let me go ahead and look at the sub D version of it. Tap the three key. Clearly I need some extra edges down here. So let's just go ahead and kind of, we can, we can get a little bit of an idea just by lining it up here. By the way, this is called pure ref. It's, you could use any image, uh, any image viewing software you want and just kind of line it up because I have to do everything in the relatively confined dimensions of this recording space. I'm, I'm putting this here. Normally I have a second monitor. I would just use that instead. So let me go ahead and we'll just hit extrude and move this down. Just kind of eyeball approximately where we want the bottom of the hammer to go. Perhaps something like that. Okay. All right. We will continue adding some additional detail here to the handle in the next video.